Welcome back to Live Security's Malware Analysis Botnet series. I'm Corey Nockreiner. In part one, you saw how attackers create their botnets. In part two, you saw some attacks botnets deliver. Here in part three, you'll learn how you can protect yourself from this fast-growing threat. In this video, I'll cover three things. How you can protect your users from bot infections, how you can muzzle any bots that do make it into your network, and ways to locate bot infections using your Firebox logs. Let's start with the most important concept. You got no problem if you got no bot. So how do you keep them off your network? Five key steps coming up. A bot client is pretty much just a fancy Trojan. All the techniques you use to defend against Trojans work as well for preventing bot infections. That doesn't mean botnet defense is super easy. Botnet herders leverage every nasty trick in their arsenal trying to sneak their clients onto your computers. To protect yourself from all avenues of attack, you need to be on your game defensively. You remember our fictional bot master Spike. Let's review some of his attacks to figure out what defenses we need. Last episode, Spike launched a massive scan that infected new victims by automatically exploiting known vulnerabilities. Two layers of defense can protect you from these mass scans. Install a firewall. WatchGuard's fireboxes protect you from most botnet scans by default. Many of the vulnerabilities that bots look for exploit ports that sane administrators almost never allow through their firewall. For instance, Spike's mass scan relied heavily on Windows networking ports, such as 135, 138, and 445. By default, your Firebox blocks these ports from external attackers, thus preventing this kind of scan from reaching your network. Patch promptly. Some bots exploit vulnerabilities in network services that you need to allow through your firewall, such as web or email services. If you consistently keep your public servers up to date with the latest patches, bot herders won't be able to exploit old vulnerabilities against them. These two layers of defense fend off direct scans from botnets. But what about indirect infection methods? Bot herders often spread their bots using booby-trapped emails and malicious drive-by downloads. They even snare new victims with malicious IM messages and bogus P2P shares. Here's how to defend against these indirect infection vectors. Most antivirus software has signatures that detect and block bot clients. I know we say this a lot, but use AV on all your computers and keep it up to date. I only use AV with automatic update features, and I usually configure it to check for updates a few times per day. If your firewall is a WatchGuard Firebox X Edge, Core, or peak, use the proxies to filter content and stop bots. By default, your Firebox's HTTP and SMTP proxies can prevent your users from downloading executable files via email or the web. You can check for these settings in your HTTP and SMTP proxy policies. If there's an executable file type you want to block, you can add it to these settings. This feature alone prevents many web and email-based bots from making it onto your network. Furthermore, if you've purchased our optional gateway antivirus, its signatures can detect and strip many bot-infected files at your gateway. Having AV that checks email at your gateway, and then again on each client, throws a one-two punch that knocks out many bot infections. Finally, Remember user education. Bots always evolve, and users keep finding ways to accidentally sneak malware in. So teach your users about the botnet threat and how to avoid it. Doing so will help them accept and support your security policies. We can help your training efforts. Check out our SecurityWise curriculum, exclusive to live security subscribers. These ready-to-go training modules provide everything you need for guiding your users towards more secure behavior on your network. 
Now you know five defenses that help keep bots out. But what if one does sneak in? Put a muzzle on it so it can't reach its master. Learn how next. Without its master, a bot is just a worthless process idling on your PC. If you can prevent bots from reaching their CNC channel, you can significantly decrease the damage they cause. Guess what? Your Firebox can do just that if you configure it to egress filter. Egress filtering means controlling traffic that leaves your network. When you prevent your users and network devices from making certain kinds of outgoing network connections, that's egress filtering. By default, your Firebox allows all outgoing traffic. To egress filter, you must delete the outgoing policy and configure your Firebox to allow only specific network services. For instance, you might only want your users to access the web, email, and file transfer servers. So you'd add outgoing HTTP, POP3, FTP, and DNS policies to your Firebox. The DNS policy is so your users can resolve domain names. As long as you don't allow your users access to IRC or any other random TCP IP ports, your egress filters block the bot's outgoing connections from your network. They probably won't be able to call back to their CNC server and register you as a new victim, so their master will never send them instructions or updates. Functionally, you've killed the bot on arrival. Egress filtering rocks. Even with these layers of security, a bot could still find its way into your network using some zero-day leet technique. But if a bot makes it past those defenses, you've got to know about it. Detection tips are coming your way. Once they get into your network, bots can use rootkit technology to burrow deep into your computer's file system. That makes finding them extremely difficult using traditional techniques. Bots can hide, but they can't hide their network traffic. When bots send spam, perform mass scans for new victims, or launch DDoS attacks, they generate traffic patterns you can easily pick out from normal network activity. But you need a feel for what your normal network traffic looks like, so you must monitor your network traffic regularly. You can monitor network traffic using many tools, such as packet sniffers, intrusion detection systems, and even your firebox. Let's look at how your Firebox's logs can help you pinpoint bot activity. Spike will replay the three attacks while we watch the Firebox logs, starting with a mass scan. When launching a mass scan, Spike's bots make hundreds of connections to random IP addresses on ports such as 135 and 445. If you see one of your IPs making hundreds of abnormal connections to a range of random IP addresses, you might have a bot on your network. Look for IPs trying to connect to ports you rarely see your computers accessing on the Internet. This traffic will appear unusual compared to your normal network traffic. Different bots might attack on different ports than Spike's RX bot, so don't expect this type of attack to always use port 135 and 445. Just look for unusual spikes in traffic that aren't typical for your network. You can easily spot spamming bots using your Firebox logs. If you've paid attention to normal network traffic, you've probably noticed primarily one computer, your SMTP server, making TCP port 25 connections. If you suddenly see another computer making hundreds of SMTP connections, it's probably spamming and could be a bot. Finally, you can detect Spike's SYNFLED attack using your Firebox logs. Here's what a SYNFLED looks like to your Firebox. As you can see, one of your internal IPs is sending hundreds of SYN packets to a single external IP. Seeing this flood of SYN requests should tip you off to a problem right away, but your Firebox goes a step further. It detects some DOS attacks and displays this message when one happens. However, Spike could also choose to spoof his SYN flood attack. This means he tells his bot to launch the attack using fake source IP addresses. In this case, you won't see the flood coming from just one IP address. However, even spoof SYN floods are easy to detect using the Firebox logs. If a zombie computer on your network is SYN flooding using spoofed IP addresses, 
Your Firebox will detect the spoofing, drop the packet, and display this log message. So if you see a bunch of seemingly random IPs sending hundreds of SIN packets to an external computer, you know one of your computers has launched a spoof SIN flood attack. Once you learn how to spot abnormal traffic patterns using your Firebox's logs, you'll quickly identify potential attacks launched by bots hiding in your network. The logs can then help you track down the offending zombie computer by its IP or MAC address. Once you've identified the infected machine, remove it from your network and disinfect it. The Firebox offers some great tools that help you identify unusual network traffic patterns. However, there are many other tools that can help you analyze traffic in even more detail. If you're comfortable with Linux and would like to try an advanced traffic monitoring suite, I recommend you check out Armon. Armon has features designed specifically to help you detect IRC bots. It also includes many graphic monitors that make it easier to spot abnormal traffic. If you want to learn more about using Armon or about botnets in general, check out the book Botnets, the killer web application. Botnets provide their masters with a potent attack framework that grows in power as it grows in numbers. These distributed attack networks are evolving fast and gaining popularity among attackers. We recommend you try to keep up with the developments in botnet technology. As you stumble across articles about it from day to day, take the time to read them. By staying abreast of botnet technology, you can learn what defenses to deploy in order to withstand the latest attacks. The good news is, despite the attacker's innovations, a few well-placed defenses will still keep most bot infections off your network. For the latest breaking news on emerging threats, join me each month on Live Security's podcast, Radio Free Security, available on iTunes. Till we meet again, stand strong. Watch card. <laughs>